Thanks for joining in. Welcome back. I'm Sam Hedden, and we have an amazing guest with us today. He was nice enough to join us, and I'm super excited and kind of nerding out about it. We have Spencer Wilding. He's done everything from being Darth Vader to Guardians of the Galaxy to Harry Potter. And on top of that, he doesn't just do acting. He's got other things that he does that are absolutely amazing. I'm really excited for you to get to know him. Thanks for joining me this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So can you tell us a little bit about where you're from, kind of a little bit about your backstory? Is that something that we could start yeah. with? Well, I'll start from, I suppose, the big bright light when I got a slap on the bum and I went, ah, you know, when I was born. So I was born in one of the smallest cities in the world called St. Asaph, right? Very, very small city because it's got a cathedral class as a city. Uh, and I moved from St. Asaph to a, to a small town called Rill, which is like five miles away. This is all in North Wales, just down the road from Snowdonia Range, yeah? Uh, so when I was two months old, we moved from Rill to Prestatin, right? Which is five miles down the road, right? So I lived there till the age of 12, and then moved to Melodin, which is a small mining village, right? Not active anymore from many, many years ago. Uh, then I moved from, from a small holding there uh, to Rill. Uh, so it's been a big circle, so I've come back to Rill. But... In, but from, I went to a, a Catholic school called uh, Oskar Meyer uh, from the age of three till 10. Then I went to a high school called Prostatin High School. Um, uh, I had a lot of fun there. You know, I was a real kid coming to Prostatin School. So uh, there's a lot of bullying going on there for me you know, and things like that. So I, I, I sort of, we'll talk about that down the line. Uh, then I went from there to a, a an agricultural college called Cleese Fassi. I did the agricultural mechanics, wanted to, be, wanted to be a farmer, lived on a small holding and worked on a dairy farm. It, the first year was great, YTS it was great, but then I went into NCD, Certificate in Dairy, a National Certificate in Dairy, and didn't go too good because I couldn't speak Welsh. So uh, I was like the, the, the black sheep in that college and I felt it. So moved from there, it wasn't my path, so I moved from there, went to a, a sports college uh, doing um, uh, sports science. But I had a very heavy dyslexic, so I struggled reading at the time. Uh, so I had to get 100% in every assignment. I was getting 96% and having a party, but you got to get 100%. But, you know, I was all practical, not theory, till later on down the line. Uh, and, then, and then I left there and I went to work in, uh, in Rotterdam, in Holland, Germany, and France, doing groundwork. Did that for a couple of years, then come back from there, and then I started kickboxing at the age of 20, 25. I had my first fight, started at 24. And then I realised I was starting to know what I wanted then. So I became the Welsh British kickboxing champion, beat everybody up, then I went to pro boxing, and then I, then I finally found another dream, it was the film world. You know, and the first thing I landed was Harry Potter playing the werewolf. Oh, so that's where the ride started. I strapped myself in and it's still going. That's, you know what? I asked that question for pretty much everybody and I never get like a detailed answer. I think yours is the most detailed that I've gotten. So that's exciting. I know. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up. So. You got into kickboxing at the age of 25. What, what propelled you into doing something like that? Well, I'm quite spiritual, believe it or not. And I did have a dream. I wanted to be in the films. I used to always ask myself, people call them their thoughts. I call them my fight gods, whatever. How am I going to get into the film world? And this little voice come back to me in the head, go, hey, Spade, Spen, you're going to get into the kickboxing. You're going to be a champion. And there's going to be a guy in the audience. I've said this a million times in Q and A's. It's guy in the audience for the fat cigar going, "Hey, want to be in the movies?" You know, he wasn't there. He wasn't there. But when I took the Welsh and British title, I got signed up with a sports agency that's based in London. And then later on down the line, a few years down the line, I got an acting agent. 
yeah? Because the sports agency deals with uh, sports guys that uh, are elite in their, in their art, you know? Yeah, they could be a scuba diver, a diver, a, you know, an ice skater, whatever, you know what I mean? But Because I was a champion of the UK, and uh, I got signed up with them, they took me on. And then, uh, so I got a few a few shows with them, but then I got more of an acting agent down the line, so down the line, so I opened up the bigger pond. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I started the kickboxing. But I, but you know, there's several reasons I started the kickboxing as well. I want, I had, I had friends that wanted to do, started doing weights. You know, get big guys, and they used to always try and encourage me to come. I said, "No, nah, I'll get my respect for the fighting." You know what I mean? I lived in a small town. You know, it's a, a little bit of a fighting town as well. I used to work the nightclubs, um, but you had to handle yourself. You had to look after yourself in our town. Do you know what I mean? It's one of them. You know, right? But you know, sports. I I encourage every child out there to do sports because it's one. It enhances your confidence. It, you know, it, it learns your life, and and you don't you don't get bullied. You know, when you when you're good at a sport because you give off you give off a, a different energy that a, that a bully does not like, and a bully likes to bully somebody who's timid, who's got a few cracks in there that's vulnerable. You know, it, it, well, it, that, that's how I feel anyway. So I, I feel that for. For, for kids in school as well, it's very important for them to do sports, you know, because it will help them along their life path. Do you think that being dyslexic and dealing with that kind of bullying and that kind of stuff like that, do you think that was a defining factor in deciding to push yourself that hard? Yeah, because I was always a fighter in many ways. And I always, because in class, it's very, very frustrating for me. Because I'm 48 now, believe it or not. Yeah, I'm 48. Said, I would have said 20. Thank you very much. You need glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, it, it's one of them. And, and I was the class clown. I had to get my attention some other way because I was getting zero qualifications. They didn't understand about dyslexia. I just thought I was thick, you know. But I wasn't. It was just my, my cerebellum. I've done a little bit of a, uh, I've looked into uh, my mum's dyslexic as well. We've looked into it, did a little little bit of a course, and it's the cerebellum didn't develop the way it should have developed through childhood. I don't know if, if that's right or wrong. Maybe it's just, I, I learned things the other way around. I learned the theory more than the, 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 the physical instead of the theory more, which would develop me in life for my path. Because if it wasn't for the kickboxing, I wouldn't be in the film world now. If it wasn't for the sports world, I would not be in the film world now. If it wasn't for the sports, I would have carried on getting bullied. Do you know what I mean? So it is, it is, it is, it's a gift to me. It was like my father, like my everything sports to me. Do you know what I mean? So what was your first acting role? Like, Can you remember the first time that your agent was like, here, you're going to do this, and you were like ecstatic about it? Well, you know, I was, I, was, I was very, very deep into the fighting world, still active in the professional boxing world, uh, kickboxing world, when I got the first role, you know? And <clears throat> I don't know if you remember how big Harry Potter was back in the day, you know? In 2002, Harry Potter, whoa! You know, it, it was the daddy, you know? It, it was the everything. Everybody was having Harry Potter, 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 mad. You know what I mean? It was when it, when it all start, start to start, start up. So when I got the audition to uh, to play the werewolf in the Prison of Azkaban, Harry Potter three, it was a big thing. And uh, my two of us play it, my, myself and Marnix van der Broek, who's a Dutch ballet dancer. So you needed two very very physical actors to play this role, you know. So when I got that, yeah, but I was a kid. I, was, I didn't come from no drama school. You know, my 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 God brought me in as such. Do you know what I mean? I had a lot of help from other places to live this dream. And I, I worked hard for it. So I, I believe there's a greater force looking down on you. If you work hard at something, you get rewarded in the end, you know, no matter what it is. Um, so when I landed that role, yeah, I was a kid on set. Uh, I was given the uh, Amani Ron Rupert kickboxing lessons. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, we were having a giggle. We used to sing Happy Birthday to Daniel on his 14th birthday. Me and myself and Alan Rickman and other cast, cast members and, and crew. You know, it, it was a moment. It was a memory and it's, I'll treasure that forever. You know, but the ride's still going. So, yeah, to play the werewolf in the prison of Azkaban, it's a gift. 
Right. You played Frankenstein. Is that, was that a difficult role to play or was that something that just came natural to you? Well, I'm like, uh, you probably get a lot of actors that do this, you be, I become the character. So I open, up, I open up the doorway to the spirit and presence of that character. If that character doesn't come to me, then it's not my role. I shouldn't be there, you know? Um, and like the Wolfman and Frankenstein and, and, and the Harry Potter films, I sort of have a, I have a feeling I'm going to get the part or we belong to this production one day. You know, it's one of them. I'll get little signals here and there, little signs. Oh, look, look, oh, look, look, there's a, there's a wolf howling over there. Oh, it means I'm going to get the wolfman job. You know, it's just one of them. Some crazy stuff happens to Sven. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I'm just nuts. So, yeah, when I got that role, I, I had a feeling I was going to be in a Frankenstein film one day. I had a feeling I was going to play Frankenstein, you know? Uh, I've, like I say, I've, yeah, I've, so I've said this several, several times on, on, uh, on Q&As but it comes out a different way. So I get the call to audition for Victor Frankenstein. So I'm like, yeah, here we go. Right. So it's not to play for Frankenstein though. It's to play, uh, it's to play the strong man in the circus, Nathaniel, right. Who opens up the show running around the circus. Have you seen Victor Frankenstein? I have. Yep. So, you know, you know, that Nathaniel's the circus strong man. Yes. Yes. And you know, that was me, right? Well, now that it's talking to you, yes. Yes, because I'm very, very, one of very, very few, very, very few, if not only one, that's credited for two characters on one show, you know, because this is what happened. <laughs> so I get the audition for it, and I, and I thought to myself, wow, that's strange. I thought I was going to get an audition for Frankenstein. Oh, okay, it must be, uh, it must be being on a Frankenstein show. You know, playing a character, right, great. So I... Uh, I, I auditioned for this role. I get the role. They say, can you grow a beard? I said, well, I've never come past the first week. So five months into it, I feel like I'm giving birth out of my face. You know, anybody that, with a beard, I salute you. Uh, it's one of them. And so I get this role. So I get the gift. They give me the role on like the Thursday or the Friday. Anyway, the, 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 the first AD rings me up or the second AD rings me up on the, on the Sunday evening and goes, Hi, Spen. I said, hi, mate. How you doing? And he goes, yeah, what it is? And I stopped him straight away. I went, you want me to play Frankenstein, don't you? You're having problems. And he goes, no, how the hell do you know that? I'm just coming out. I'm just coming out of production office. How do you know that? I just had a feeling, man. I just had a feeling. He goes, yeah. So basically, it was so vigorous, that role. It was too much for one actor, you know? So I, they brought me on to do, to two of us play the part. So, so, but we've got a shared credit. So it, it was one of them, and it was a, it was a beautiful feeling to play on a, a Victor Frankenstein. And Frank, you know, they, you know, these are these are legendary, awesome films. You know what I mean? So I've ticked off the Wolfman. I've ticked off Frankenstein. You know what I mean? So we're working it. We're working it. So I just need to play a, a Dracula now and be in a... Be in I mean, a let's like see, a, you need Dracula. Like, that's like, you got to do the Dracula part and then you've got to do, like, the Lagoon Monster as well. <laughs> come to me, <laughs> my, my pretty lady. And then Phantom of the Opera. Tonight. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's a must. Like, if you're going to play... If you're going to play a, a villain, you have to play Phantom of the Opera. Like, you, wow. you have to. Well, I'd have to get working on my singing voice, wouldn't I? Well, you, the, the, there are voiceover actors who could just ah. do that part. So, see, we've got there this go. figured out. It's all good. Well, have a word. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. So, you played Darth Vader. And, obviously, that's quite the role to fill. Um, was that a hard... Was that a hard role to do, or was it something you were really excited about? You're very excited about it, yeah, because I knew it changed my world a little bit. You know what I mean? And and it was, and I always, I always question if there's a real spirit and presence of a character out there. You know, so when, so, so, so when there's a real spirit, spirit and presence of Darth Vader, and when he he chooses his actor, the actor doesn't choose him. Do you know what I mean? So it's a fate thing as well. And me and Dan play the part, and he chose us to play him. Uh, yeah, you know, there, there was a vigorous um, audition process to get that job. A lot of secrecy about around that job as well. Uh, but you know, you know that the emperor called us in. 
and uh, the rest is history. And uh, it's great to have on your CV. You know, it, it, it was a it was a beautiful it was a beautiful film to work on. A beautiful beautiful set, beautiful crew, beautiful cast. That everything it was a magical film. Rogue One. You know, it, I, I think the fans were happy with what me and Dan brought. And yeah, it, it was it was great to feel the force in a way I've never felt before. I did notice in my research you were nominated for Kids' Choice um, favorite villain. Are you all right with being noted as the, the favorite villain? Is that like is that something you write down like with pride? Well, yeah. Well, you, you know, it's not yourself. It's not Spencer Wilder. It's the character. You know, he's Darth Vader. He's the, he's the number one bad guy on silver screen. I, I, I'm just honoured. You know, I've been privileged to to be 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 it for him to use use me and to 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 walk him about. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it's, yeah, it's great. It's an honour, man. It's I, I'm grateful. I thank the gods every day and feel very grateful that you know the productions have asked me to come on and do a job for them, and I just try and do it as best as I can for them, bring it for them. You know what I mean? So, how has COVID impacted? your work that you do obviously COVID has definitely um changed a lot of stuff but has it like decreased the work that you're doing or is it just changing the work that you're doing no immensely you know it's changing it and it's affected it like every job out there not just the movie rules you know every job out there gets a, it has been affected some way shape or form you know it's it's the world's not used to a plague you know, and, and it's it's out there and it's, you know, we've got to follow the rules and, and things just change. It's the new world for us all, you know. I hadn't worked for over 13 months. You know, I lost 10 shows as soon as it was it was, it was was brought out. You know, I've been doing general work, which I'm cool with, you know. Uh, I've been general worker before my dreams took place. So I've gone back to a general work, you know, but uh, now it's starting to pick up for me again. You know, I've started, I've had, I did a job in Prague. Uh, a week or two ago, can't talk about it, but it's, it should be great. Um, it's a, uh, but, you know, it was like one day's work with nearly three to three weeks quarantine. You know, it's like, wow, you know, but this is the way it is. It won't stay like this forever. If we all do as we're told, wear our masks, get the jab, do this, do that. You know what I mean? Follow yeah. the orders. Uh, and when we'll see the less, less death rates going down and, you know, it, it, you know, we, it, this is the way. This is the way we got to we got to get it done, um, but I'm starting to get a little bit of work here and there in it, so I'm very grateful. But I, I haven't spat my dummy out. It is what it is, you know. So we just roll with it. That's a good outlook. Just roll with it. I think a lot of people forget that things will eventually turn out better. It just takes time, and like you said, following those protocols. So yeah. Mm. So this is the. Yeah. Part where I'm going to ask you, because this will get edited and all the fun stuff that my producer does, is there any mm. specific questions you would like me to ask you? Now, I like to find out a little bit about the person that's talking to me as well, because at the end of the day, we're both human beings, right. right? We come in and leave the same, you know what I mean? So tell me a little bit about you. Tell me about something about your dreams. Tell me what you're up to. I am a fully licensed teacher now. Got that done during COVID. That's been mm -hmm. my lifelong dream since I was like. Congratulations. Oh. Um, Good. So this is a positive side that's come out of this mess. It is. It is. Good. I finished was finishing my thesis, so I finished a lot of schoolwork and did it all online, which was I hate online schoolwork. Um, I do a lot of panels and I speak. I do public advocacy work for mental health. That's right, what okay. I'm living, and I, I love it. I love speaking. I love talking to people. I love educating people. So good. Well, well done you. Well done you. <laughs> what a God's work is right there. It's taking a very long time, but hey, it. Hey, it, you know what? Things take take time to get. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. If you want perfection, doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. You know, otherwise, if you do something overnight, bang. The thing's going to fall down in a week, isn't it? That is you need, true. You need things to be solid. So it, it's it's about a timing, and it's your time now. So that's the way it is. See? Hey, you. We, we need to be, like, talking every day. I, you need to write, like, a motivational book. This, this, <laughs> this needs to happen. You know what? 
one day I've, I, it's to find that right person again it's about a timing i would love i've had a very very interesting life i've had a very interesting lives you know and it's finding that right person to sit down and talk to me because i know i can there's a lot of spends out there that have had my difficulties you know and and it, you know my first job was working on the donkeys when I was five or six years old and the beach across the road from me to play in Darth Vader and the Star Wars, you know what I mean? It's like, how does a kid get like that from there to there who can't read or write to 32? That's interesting. That's a book I'd like to read. Do you know what I mean? So one day I want to find that person to go, right, okay, let's make this happen. You know what I mean? Hey, I know a few people that could actually do that for you. Really? And I do, I do. Oh, we'll have to have a chat about that. Um, I don't want well, one in particular. I'm a great believer, great believer in fate, and things happen for reasons. Let's see what happens. You know what I mean? Because I want to get, I want to get my story out there. You know what I mean? But it's finding that right person to sit down and pull it out of Spen's dyslexic brain. You know what I mean? <laughs> to put it down. But obviously, it, I think the world would like to to read that as well. So obviously there's a lot of paperwork involved in there so nobody can run away with my story and build a castle. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Properly, you know what I mean? So my family can, from, uh, from all the fighting I've done, from all this, from all that, you know, all the hard sweat I put in there, then my kids can, uh, can have a prize at the end of it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm all for my kids. Do you know what I mean? That makes perfect sense. So what I'd, what I'd like to do there now, but if you're going to get going, then I'd like to give a message to all the kids out there. Yes, that would be great. And I, and I always do. So kids, always, always, always follow your dreams. You know, you might have a dream to be the best postman or the best house builder or the best person that cuts lawns, or you might want to be a superstar and be in the movies and this, that, and the other. If you want to follow the dream that I followed, you must have a good job, right? be a good job because you can't live off the parents you must get a good job to pay for your dream because it will you need something to fuel your dream right and it's very important that you don't live off mum and dad you must pick up life skills right so do well in the school if you have dyslexia like me don't worry about it i call it a gift because we're better other ways so speak about it yeah if you're struggling with reading speak about it yeah, because there's somebody out there now, because it's a good time to have dyslexia, because there's a lot of things out there that will help you, you know, because they do, they do get hold of you, and they'll go, oh, he's got dyslexia, let's get hold of him, let's see what his gift is, or her gift is. So, and eat your sprouts, and be careful across the road. Yeah? Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you for joining me, I really appreciate it. I learned so much more than just doing the basic research. It's always entertaining to get to talk to somebody and learn about them as a person. So I really appreciate it. So thank you for joining me. Now Sam, you're a beautiful soul. I can see that. You're good in and out. So you keep up your great work, yeah? Because you're here for a reason. So do your thing, right? And it's a pleasure talking to you. And I'm sure we'll talk again in the future. Well, that would be perfect. This is Sam Hedden with producer Andy Watson, and now you know Spencer Wilden. <laughs> or you can do it your way first, and then you can do it my way. Shut up. <laughs>